I get inspiration from our ancestors. Mm -hmm. And in spite of uh, adversities, atrocities, gross atrocities, the idea of I am still, I'm literally here mm -hmm. in 2023 despite all of that. classically trained violist um, and co-founder and artistic director of Castle of Our Skins. The um, important thing for me to note is, is the viola identity, and I think that really resonates with everything that I do, um, in the sense that viola usually is in the middle of things, it brings chamber music together, it sort of sits in the center of an orchestra. Um, it may be quiet, but it's very, very powerful. Uh, and I think that really resonates with my personality and the work that I do, and by extension, the work that Castle of Our Skins does, which is to connect and to convene, to create happenings, bring people together, bring communities together, bring different disciplines together, different arts and histories and cultures um, together. This is Phyllis's book's 250th anniversary, and as you know, when she tried to publish it all those years ago in Boston, she wasn't successful, she had to come to London. Mm. In your field, what have been the things that represent progress for young African women, black women musicians of Boston today? It's such an interesting question. And, and for me, um, because Cast Lover Skins is so steeped in black culture, specifically black history, black music, um, that the history aspect is so prominent in my mind to know that I come from a lineage. And to think about the power, yes, in classical music, but of black women politically in this country with the election, black women stole that vote, right? And to think about uh, dollars, businesses and entrepreneurs, black women are on the rise. Um, and it's not a, a 2023 phenomenon, but there is precedent for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. um, thinking here specifically in Boston, you mentioned the concert on, on Sunday with Boston Lyric Opera, proceeds for that concert and for our program June 30th, a rent party, are going to go to the League for Women for Community Service, okay. the League of Women for Community Service, which is- Which is an old organization. Old organization, one of the oldest continuously run black woman-led organization here on, on Mass Ave. I think it's over 100 years old, if I remember. Over 100 years, early 1900s, wow. it, it was founded. Um, and again, black woman-led, led, visioned, and um, maintained, stewarded. I consider myself a daughter of Phyllis, even though I'm not American. Mm -hmm. Her work had such a global impact. The fact that she came to London and there was a European community aware of this amazing prodigy mm -hmm. at a time, as you know, when enslavement was not just her fate, but the fate of millions of others like us. So you today, us today, what's your approach to moving forward with the vital work that you do individually and as um, part of your organization in terms of navigating the continuing obstacles that we face? I think to do it with community has been uh, a, a recipe that has really served me well. And again, that's not a new phenomenon, but really rooted in how uh, griots, for instance, would would share and communicate and inspire, right? With history, with arts, with movement, with um, participation, there's, there's this more and um, kind of idea. Yeah. And certainly with, with Castle of Our Skins, which is a concert and educational series, um, music plus, I like to say, so classical music and visual art and dance and spoken word or name comes from a poem by Nikki Giovanni that says, we're all in prison in the Castle of Our Skins. If that's the case, let our skin be this palace. Um, so cultural pride is very um, powerful. One, of, one person that you also interviewed, Lamurchi Frazier, is our resident oh. historian. So history is- She's an she, icon. She is, she is amazing. Um, and the idea of being able to have strength in numbers, I am because we are, is a pretty lived um, practice. Hello, my name is Ashley Gordon. This is Phyllis Wheatley 250, Phyllis Forever.